Broadcasting from Slough. Ooh, yeah. Streaming around the world. This is Mark Denham on Atom Radio. Atom Radio. Oh, yeah. Playing the music you want to hear. The yeah. podcast. Yeah. 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 Atom Radio. Hello, welcome to episode 153 of the best bits of Atom Radio Breakfast Podcast. And it's actually October now, Saturday, 2nd of October, when this releases into the the month of Halloween, uh, Bonfire Night on the way, and then Christmas. We're into the running, aren't we now, towards 2022. Uh, given that we've had lockdowns this year and panic buying of petrol and that, I'm going to put it out there now. Surely 2022 has to be better than 2021, does it not? On the podcast this week, we talk coffee and all is not as it seems to be. We talk pronunciation. And by that, I don't mean elocution. I just mean basic pronunciation. Uh, We also discovered that you are not necessarily what you wear. Uh, Maybe you were encouraged to panic buy and still are being. And also shortages of what this Christmas plus Bond themes, all that and more is in the podcast. Quarter to seven, morning and welcome to Tuesday. This is Mark Denham on Atom Radio, playing the music you want to hear. We are the home of the anthems. Costa Coffee customers are shocked by a new advert. Richard Hartz thought the advert initially uh, that he saw on Facebook was a fake cooked up by a prankster but was then stunned when he found out it was actually uh, created by Costa Coffee themselves. The advert urges students to flick the bean. Well, I never. Mark Denham on Atom Radio. Atom Radio. Atom Radio streaming from Slough on a Tuesday morning. It's a quarter past eight. If you're a, a coffee drinker, would you drink a genetically engineered coffee? Lab scientists have now created the first ever, they say, genetically engineered coffee that smells and tastes just like the real thing. I don't know why they bothered. Why would you not just have the real thing? I don't get it. Mark Denham, Denham. 7.20, random thought has popped in my head. If the German Chancellor is called Angela Merkel... Surely she should therefore be the German Chancellor, Angela Merkel. And equally, but, 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 but here, equally, if you are called Gemma with a G, surely you should be Gemma and not Gemma. Mark Denham on Atom Radio. And now, 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 I've just seen a news story about the German Chancellor, Angela Merkel. And that's made me think now about like how many things we're getting wrong here, because if she is... Angela Merkel and not Angela, which basically is how it's spelled. Let's be honest here. I think it's just a case of being different. Anyway, uh, if she is Angela Merkel, then we're talking about Germany and we're talking about Gemma. But then we're also talking about Gentleman. You see, this is where it all gets confusing. Like if you take a J, Gemma, jump, etc., etc., right? But then if you take a G, how does a G change? Like uh, a gamma ray going. Yeah, I'm going out. Uh, how does a G change? I don't get it. Because you've got like, I'm going to see a gentleman. Surely that gentleman should be a J. Now I've just overcomplicated the whole of Wednesday, haven't I? Mark Denham on Atom Radio. Atom Radio. Today we've ended up on the subject of dress and suits in particular. Should you be expected to wear a suit in 2021 or not? And Philip says, Morning, Mark. I enjoy wearing a suit. It gives me a sense of being to get up in the morning and get dressed and put my suit on and head out to work. That's that's all good for you, Philip. Thumbs up, mate. Uh, In all seriousness, thumbs up. And I don't want to risk offending anyone here. But that's kind of what I'm saying, though, Philip, is that surely I don't know what job you do, but surely the fact you've got up in the morning, you've you've had maybe a shave if you are clean shaven, you've had a shower and all that. 
uh, and you get ready and you head out to work, surely that should give you a sense of being. Uh, I don't know about the suit. I think that we are perhaps a little bit brainwashed here into this, that and the other. But I mean, then again, though, Philip, in all fairness, you are discussing this with a rebel. I don't even think children should be wear, made to wear school uniform. I think children have a right to express themselves as individuals. So therefore, within a certain framework, they should be able to wear pretty much whatever they want to school. You see, so I don't know. Maybe I'm just a rebel without a clue. Yeah! Mark Denham, Denham. Yesterday, if you remember, we may have gone slightly off topic and we ended up talking about suits. Uh, and uh, I had no intention of doing that. And it does remind me, by the way, of an old vending machine. Do you remember the pot noodle vending machines that used to, uh, used to? well, I mean, they, they, were, they were a disaster, really, the one that I had experience of. And they had this annoying voice. And it, I, I'm only a man in a suit. And the annoying thing was, like, in the ice rink where it was, You'd probably have like a minute silence, let's say, in memory of 9-11 or Remembrance Sunday or something like that or a, a supporter that had passed away of a minute silence and it would be impeccably uh, observed, this minute silence, then all of a sudden you'd get, I'm only a man in a suit and it was so annoying. Anyway, I don't want to talk about suits today. Today I want to go back to something I did have yesterday and this is Jens Hanning. Jens Hanning is a 56-year-old artist He's a Dane, and uh, he he was commissioned by a museum to produce some artwork, which included banknotes. He therefore got the uh, the gallery to advance him sixty thousand pounds, so he could use the banknotes in this. And then he put up a or sent in uh, submitted just an empty frame. And the uh, the art gallery, interestingly, has said, Oi, listen, we're going to sue if we don't get our money back by the 16th of January. They have, however, uh, displayed it, calling it an interesting artwork. Now, bear in mind, it is just a piece of white canvas or whatever it is in a frame. There's actually nothing there, right? And then this got me thinking, okay, I can't draw, but... Maybe I should have done a GCSE R because then when it says, like, you have to do this, I could just submit an empty frame, a, an empty bit of canvas or whatever, and I could obviously get away with this. And if they say, well, you've not done anything, I'll say, excuse me, museums in Denmark call that interesting artwork. Where's my grade? Mark Denham, Denham. Six twenty-four morning and welcome to Friday. It's Mark Dennett Breakfast on Atom Radio. Rain this morning should clear by lunchtime, becoming largely dry and bright through the afternoon. Winds will ease as well. Highs today up at seventeen degrees. Piers Morgan hits the headlines as No Time to Die finally goes on show yesterday. Piers Morgan says James Bond is about the last real man standing in Hollywood, and if the woke warriors dare make him a woman, I'm going to campaign for Wonder Woman to be a man. He has a point, in all fairness. There's, you know, Wonder Woman. Nobody's ever campaigned for Wonder Woman to become mum, Wonder Man, have they? And yet there are so many people that say that James Bond, who is the character from a series of books, should become a woman. He has a point. Mark Denham on Atom Radio. Atom Radio online, on mobile, on smart speaker. It is Mark Denham at breakfast, loud, proud, standing out for the crowd on a Friday morning, heading towards the weekend. The Wales, the Welsh even, not the Wales. The Welsh are up in arms. A sign which has appeared in Monmouthshire uh, is in both Welsh and English. It actually says, when red light shows, wait here. However, uh, the, the Welsh are not happy uh, they believe it says cockweight here. After the Welsh word for red was misspelled, the uh, word for red uh, in Welsh is apparently gotch, G-O-C-H. I don't really know what's wrong with R-E-D, if I'm honest. Uh, but uh, they've spelled it wrong that says uh, G-O-C-K, the word letter K is not used in the Welsh language. Uh, and also with a screw holding the sign to the framework, it appears to say cock instead of gock, but got would be wrong because it's gotch. I don't get all this. Why not just have, when red light shows, wait here? And then at least everybody knows where they stand, or sits, or parks, or waits. Mark Denham on Atom Radio. Atom Radio. 
today we talk Christmas uh, and Alice is still asking for Christmas music. Alice, I'm not one of these people that if you were to bat your eyelids, it'll work. It's not going to work. We'll get Christmas music at Christmas time. Today, though, uh, we talk about Christmas, changes to Britain's border rules come into force today. And under new immigration rules, the European ID card is no longer an accepted proof of identity. EU nationals will need to show a passport to enter the United Kingdom. It is said by the road haulage industry and the shopping industry, this could cause shortage this Christmas of turkeys, of beer, of bicycles, of sofas, electronic goods, fizzy drinks and toys. Now, let's not forget last year we already had a shortage of electronic goods due to the global chip shortage, which is still going on, meaning that electronic goods are still already in uh, short supply. So to our cars and stuff like that. Uh, Beer, obviously, that's not going to go down well at the time where everybody does perhaps enjoy an extra tipple or two of the year as well. Toys, well, what are you going to give away at Christmas? Sofas, sofas I don't really get, if I'm honest. You don't need a new sofa for Christmas. Make do with the one you've got. And bicycles, if you're that eco-friendly, upcycle the one you've got. No pun intended. I ask you today, though, what would it be that is a shortage of... Uh, making your Christmas a disaster. Morning, Carl. Thank you for your email. Carl says, did you mention earlier people who usually have a turkey may have to swap to a nut roast? Is this there for a conspiracy started by vegetarians or vegans? Ah, I don't know. Uh, Carl says, how come there's a shortage of turkeys, but there's no shortage of nuts for a nut roast? I don't know, Carl, uh, if I'm honest. I'm going to be honest, though, if it came down to it, I do like a turkey, uh, roast potatoes and all that at Christmas. I do like it. But if it came down to it and I had to have a nut roast, uh, nut roast instead, not a nut roast, I don't think anybody called nut would be happy being roasted at Christmas. Well, actually, I don't know, but I won't get into that because it's that time of the morning. It's 20 to 8. Uh, if I had to have a nut roast at Christmas, I think I'd rather, I'm honest, just have a burger and chips or maybe a uh, crispy chicken and super noodles instead would be more my kind of thing rather than the nut roast. Mark Denham on Atom Radio. This has taken a little longer than I thought, but then in all uh, in all honesty, I didn't think of it either. So then maybe I am shallow myself. Morning, Nick. Thank you for your email on air at atomradio.co.uk. Today, new immigration laws come into force. Uh, now, drivers will need to show passports to get into the country rather than EU ID cards. It's said that that, in combination with the shortage of HGV drivers, could cause uh, shortages at Christmas, and we could be we could be down on turkeys and and, and, and all sorts of things. Uh, so, if you are uh, looking ahead to Christmas, I'm asking you today: a shortage of what could be a uh, an issue for you this year? Uh, however, Nick then says, I don't really care if I'm honest what we are short of at Christmas, as long as that. No, oh, hang on, hang on, don't read that. Uh, as long as we still get to spend it with our friends and family without restrictions this year. Uh, it, it's only fair after last year. It's only fair now that we get to spend it with our friends and family this year. A proper, proper Christmas. And I agree with what Nick's saying. Does it matter if you have to swap a turkey for a bit of roast lamb? Does it matter if you have one less beer? Does it matter if your toys are substituted with other toys? As long as you get to spend it with your friends and family. Because like, unless you're religious, that's surely what Christmas is all about, isn't it? It's spending the time with friends and family. So then that, Nick, is the best one of the day so far. Mark Denham on Atom Radio. Atom Radio. Earlier on, I played Aha! And the uh, the theme song from an old Bond movie. Uh, I played The Living Daylights. And the new Bond movie, of course, was available as of the last film featuring Piers Brosnan. And I did say... 
that I think Aha! The Living Daylights is better than Billie Eilish and the theme song to the uh, the No Time to Die film, right? Uh, morning, Lauren. Lauren says, please, 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 can we not cuss Billie Eilish? Lauren, I'm not cussing Billie Eilish by any stretch of the imagination. You may like Billie Eilish, I personally don't. I'm not cussing her work. What I'm saying is I just don't think it says Bond theme to me, if I'm honest. When you go back through the history of Bond themes, I don't think it says Bond theme. That's what I'm saying. Atomradio.co.uk Stand by that on the Bond theme thing, if I'm honest. It's composed by Hans Zimmer. Uh, who has done many, 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 many good things. But I just don't think it says James Bond to me. Uh, Certainly when you compare it to Aha and The Living Daylights, I don't think it stands up well, if I'm honest. I just don't. Sorry uh, if you are a big fan of Billie Eilish. I don't think it stands up well, but there we are. Anyway, if you are going to see the Bond film, enjoy the Bond film. The last one for Daniel Craig as well. I'm not the biggest Bond fan ever, but I have enjoyed some of the Daniel Craig work, so I will, at some point in time, make time to go and see the James Bond film. What I will also find time to do is The Breakfast Show next week. Uh, Last week before a holiday for me, so I'm quite excited about that. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Uh, Six until ten, shall we call it a day in the morning? Wake you up and get your day going. Monday to Friday on Atom Radio. Uh, I'll be there, and with a bit of luck, you'll be there too. Atom Radio. Oh, yeah. Playing the music you want to hear. You can find us online, on mobile, on smart speaker, on atomradio.co.uk, TuneIn Radio Box, Streamer, Smart Speaker, and iTunes Radio, live 24 hours a day. 